have spent maybe 10 periods of incarceration in prison. 62% of prisoners in Ireland will re-offend within three years of being released from prison. Emmett Dennis, a 52-year-old originally from Malahide in County Dublin, was in prison in the US, the UK and the Netherlands on 10 different counts. In total, he spent four and a half years behind bars. After he completed his last sentence in the UK in 2002, the light switched for him. He decided he would turn his life around and in 2015, he graduated with a degree in psychotherapy. I was a very, very sensitive child who, um, who had a father who ran for this country, who figured inside that they could never measure up to, you know, to being a boy and then a man in, in this, you know. And I, I, I hid behind this, um, what is it, the, the, the sensitivity. So to disguise the sensitivity, I acted out, I acted up, I, you know, and then that became alcohol and that became drugs. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't like myself. There, there would have been some trauma when I was young. Um, trauma which, you know, a, a lot of people wouldn't, would unfortunately know about. Um, and that would have happened, um, you know, at a, at a school in this country. So yeah, there was, there was always behavioural things going on. Um, my first drink, um, I think I was, I remember my father giving me a taste of beer at six years of age. And he was, he was in Aer Lingus and he was, he was going down to Nigeria for six months the next day. And they were having a house party. They took up the carpet, it was dancing on the floors and it was, it was a keg of beer. And, and I remember him giving me like a half a glass of beer. The, my first drunk was at about nine. And again, there was a house party going on and I stole a six pack of McArdle's beer in bottles and myself and my brother Dermot drank the beers and couldn't go to school the next day kind of thing, you know. We get on this kind of situation where it, becomes, it just becomes a revolving door. So I get caught shoplifting, I go to prison for six or eight, ten weeks, maybe six, depending on the, on the crime, and then get out and the pattern starts again. Um, I, I now start to appear in front of a judge. And um, finally, this, this gentleman um, it takes a look at my record and says, you know, he says, like, Mr. Dennis, like, you know, prison is not, prison is not working for you, you know? And of course me, the, you know, forever smart ass sitting in the back, like sniggering, like, yeah, no shit Sherlock, you know? So he says to me, um, and this is when I started to listen, he said, I want you to go back to prison for a month, come here with a report from a drug worker of where you're going to go to rehab and get your life sorted out. Sure enough, I went back uh, a month later to um, the Old Bailey and uh, to his word, he gave me um, a probation order. So I now have to go somewhere for a year. I have to produce urine twice a week um, to prove that I'm not, you know, taking any drugs. But it was then that, you know, that the, the penny did drop. And it was about eight or nine days into this process. So I was coming off the drugs. I was kind of shaky and unwell. But at the same time, you had to attend two sessions of... Um, therapy every day. So you had to go into a group of 15 people typically and sit down in a, in a circle and, and start to talk about your life. You then had to present your life story on paper. So, and you had to read it out in front of the 15 people. And uh, off I, I got about halfway through, I was on page two or three or something. And the next thing I, 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 I broke down. You know, I just started welling up and I couldn't read and then the tears were dropping on the page and, you know, all of that kind of thing. And, and then the next thing, you know, I, I, I stopped for a minute, I took a breath and I was like, come on, you can do this, you know, and then you can go outside. And I read the rest of it. I left the room, I went outside and it was a gorgeous day. I mean, it was just, it, it was just a special day, weather-wise. Um, there was this giant white fluffy clouds, perfect blue sky behind them, um, sun, you know, beaming down, and you're in this lovely garden in this period house. And I went out and I, I just, 
I just drew a line in the sand and I said, okay, that's it. It's over. You've You've hurt people, you've hurt yourself, and it's time to get this together. You know, it's time to, to do something with your life. Took a, took a road trip and drove from Cornwall um, out to India, around India and back. Um, and that took the best part, like planning and doing the trip was, was almost a two year affair. Mo ended up moving to Thailand opened a little cafe there selling western food to western tourists and um but eventually i came to a place in my life where i kind of realized that i had a leg up with paulette so from leaving from the transition of leaving the the rehabilitation center and getting my life back on track i had a leg up okay. and i wanted to or i needed to for my own development um, i had to start again and unfortunately that meant the breakup of a marriage um, and I ended up after some amount of time coming back here to to Ireland and I enrolled in college and I was I think I was in college for about four months and I was on this online dating uh, app I, I met Trish and we emailed back and forth for, for about a month and we eventually met up um, nine years ago in and around this time and um, we just hit it off straight away. I made it clear, you know, that, um, you know, that I wasn't coming with a Mercedes and, you know, uh, two properties in Spain, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, um, so, yeah, no, I made that clear. Um, even though I had lost out on an opportunity of dating another girl because of my, my truthfulness. Um, but everything worked out. It, it, Trish has been a part of my life every day for nine years, a huge, you know, and a real, a real central part of my life because, um, you know, like the, the, the biggest thing we have in life, a lot of people think it's, you know, it's cars and it's money and it's relationship is the biggest thing that we have in life, family, friends, you know, and, and I've got that with, you know, with Trish. Uh, I mean, I, I'm so lucky because not just Trish, I have a family that has never turned their back on me. So if I found myself in a prison in London, you know, I have a sister that lives in Luxembourg and she would put £200 an envelope and, and send it to my prison canteen account. That's the kind of family I have. I did five years uh, studying psychotherapy and counselling and um, I got through college by doing talks at schools where I would go out to um, post primary school, typically talk to fourth, fifth or sixth years um, about my life journey. And um, that helped me in terms of not forgetting who, who I am, but also it, it helped economically in terms of, I was able to put myself through college. And um, so my, my, my day now is um, I've, got a, I've got a few clients. I do something called ecotherapy. Um, which is where I just I've decided that I don't want to sit in rooms with people that a lot of them are coming because of stress in their jobs. So I'm I'm thinking like maybe an office is counterproductive. So I came up with this idea that I would do counselling outdoors, typically on circular walks. Um and I've got I've got a few brave clients who wanted something different from therapy as well. And one of the one of the pieces that you know again I'm quite proud of until I go on to do my masters um, is is this piece of work, and it took me eighteen months to to write it because I went back every day and um, went over it and went over it and changed it and you know edited it. Um, yeah, so writing is is something that I I don't know I use it as a tool to to help me in life. After I, I, I completed the program, um, the rehabilitation program that the judge sent me to, uh, I wrote to him um, at the Old Bailey. Uh, I wrote a letter saying, you know, wh whoopie do, I've done it, you know. And um, I, got a I got a response back. Thank you so much for your letter, which I was delighted to receive. Congratulations on making such a success of everything. I know how difficult it is to turn things around in a way that you have done. And it's a tremendous achievement of which you can be really proud. So, I mean, this, this letter 
is something that I'm going to keep for the rest of my life. Uh, I don't think people get handwritten letters from judges too often. I have become everything that I used to laugh at when I was 15 and 16 and 17 years of age. I'm the vice chairman of the Balnoil Community Garden. I go to the library and take out books. Uh, so, uh, like, I, I've been on stage in, in plays. I've been in a, a film uh, as an extra, Michael Inside. I've been um, over in Kiltiernan on in, Into the Badlands. Um, you know, li li life, is, life is good.